you see it? Yeah. About that life. In the near future, you can have one of these too. <laughs> How y'all doing? <laughs> so, I'm here today with episode number six. <laughs> we made it to six, y'all. So, uh, this week I am, first, I just want to apologize for not being present last week or getting the video out last week. I had a, a rough week last week. Mentally, I was not really there. Um, I actually had to take a day to myself for mental reasons. I had to get my mental together because there's some things that happened in my personal life that I had to address with someone near and dear to me. And um, it was hard. It was hard because I had to hold myself accountable. And <laughs> y'all know, it's hard to hold your own self accountable when you know you in the wrong. <laughs> But it's getting better for me because I've been working on doing that for a while now, holding myself accountable for my actions and the things that I do. So um, on top of that, the business has been really, really slow. Like I haven't made, I'm sorry, there's something in my eye, but I haven't made any money to pay the rent <laughs> for November. <laughs> So, uh, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm going to figure it out because I had to do the same thing for this month. I had to figure it out because I didn't make enough to pay October's rent. So, yeah. Welcome to jumping out there and doing your own thing because it's your passion. And you can't, you're not going to be happy unless you do it. These are the trials and tribulations of it when... You go for broke. They took all my money, all of it. It's <laughs> not funny, I think. It's not. It's really not. And you do, and you follow your heart and follow your dreams. It's not pretty in the beginning, but um, for this video, I am going to give y'all the backstory of how. I came up with the idea to open an art store. So, uh, if some of you have been following me, following me and following my journey, you know uh, I started a business called Seven Essential. It was uh, originally a bath and body business that sold natural bath and body products made by black owned businesses, small black owned businesses. And I was having trouble getting that started um, or getting that to pop. So um, along the lines of that, I ended up um, doing jewelry too. So um, I made a pair of earrings one day and um, I wore them to work and my co-workers loved the earrings and they all requested me to make them some earrings so i started making earrings and i started putting them on the 70 central website and the earrings started to sell more than the bath and body products that i was selling so i ended up shutting down the bath and body product part of 70 central and just um, doing earrings, which I turned it into 70 Central Creates. And it, I was, I sell earrings and any other things that I create because that's what I like to do. I like to create, be creative and, and make stuff. <laughs> so, um, after that, I still have that. However, it was not serving the purpose of what I really set out to do to uh, have my own business. I really, I originally wanted to have my own business 
so that I have an outlet to connect with the community and be able to give back through my business, give job opportunities through my business, and you know, all of that good stuff. Um, and making the earrings was, I felt like it was more self um, rewarding versus rewarding my community and the people that look like me. So um, I had to, I wanted to get back to my original idea of starting my own business. So um, one of the things I had to do was think about how can I, how and what I can do to um, have a successful business. And I know with the earrings, it's more of a want than a need. So I really wanted something that was more of a need for people than something that's that's vanity and and really more fashion than like a need and and giving back and serving to people. So one day, um, on my way, driving back, moving back, I'm from Minnesota, so I was moving back here to Georgia from Minnesota, um, and I was on the road driving, I was listening to podcasts, and I was listening to a podcast with David Shands and um, Ash Cash, and they were talking about um, entrepreneurship. And they stated in there that you want to find something that's a service for people and that's a need for people. So I'm just listening to this podcast on the road here, and I was trying to think of what I can do. Like, how can I still make, how can I still be myself and true to myself and also provide a service that'll benefit people? And I thought about like during the pandemic, like all the stuff that I did during the pandemic and the art store came to mind because like during the pandemic, I went to the art store almost every day and I wasn't the only one there. The art stores were still packed, still in business during the whole pandemic. Well, I wouldn't say packed, but the lines were outside because they had to pick up an order online and you go to the store and they'll bring it to you um, curbside. So they all had curbside options during the pandemic. So they didn't go out of business or their, I don't, their, when I did the research, their business slowed down a little bit, but they didn't lose a whole lot um, during the pandemic. They were able to stay afloat. So I kept that in mind, and then also the fact that an art store would still be true to who I am as a creative. And through that art store, I can do so many other things. Like right now, we offer the birthday parties, the craft birthday parties, the private event sessions, the paint and sips. Now I'm looking into doing homeschooling, um, having an art, art curriculum for homeschools. So we're working on, I'm working on that now. And there's just so many other things you can have. You can bring in artists and sell art and just so many other avenues you could take through having an art store. So that was my light bulb. I'm on the road, driving, listening. And I'm like, I'm going to open up an art store. <laughs> so that is how Mad Dreamer Space was created. And how I came up with the name, I already had Mad Dreamer Space because I had a, I have a marketplace website where, where people who hand make their own products can set up a storefront on my platform. It's called Mad Dreamer Space and it's for black owned artists who create 
and hand make their own products. So that name was origin is originally from that venture. And I just took that, I just took Mad Dreamer Space and added art and craft supplies to it. There's still a whole backstory of how I came up with Mad Dreamer Space too, but I'll save that for a later video. <laughs> so after I came up with, after that light bulb went off, I did my research on how to open an art store. Just a moment, y'all. My little my throat's a little dry. I thought I went off camera, but <laughs> clearly I didn't. <laughs> clearly my reach is a little further than I expected. <laughs> but um, so uh, what was I saying? So yeah, so I'll come back. I'll tell you guys about how I came up with the name in the next video. The next video also, I'm going to go over the next step that I did after I came up with um, the idea to open an art supply store. So the next step I did take was to get a business plan together. So with my first business, I didn't have any business plan. I didn't do a business plan at all. I just had the idea and jumped right in. <laughs> But this time, I knew that I had something really, really, um, really, really genuine and, no, not genuine, because I mean, all my ideas are genuine. <laughs> I had something good, I should say. I had something good. So I wanted to make sure that I did everything the right way and I had a good map to guide me into the steps of into the steps of um sorry there's some popped up on the phone into the steps of opening my art supply store so that's what i'll talk about on the next video if you guys have any other questions please drop them below in the comments don't forget to like and subscribe the video before you go and that is going to be it for now. Oh, no, no, no. I forgot to tell you guys that I started my part-time job last week. And let me tell you, I don't like it. <laughs> like, so here's the thing. I'm standing on my feet for eight hours throughout the day. And by the fourth hour... Not even the fourth, maybe like by the third hour, my feet are tingling. By the fourth hour, I'm about ready to break down. <laughs> my feet are not made for that, for that life anymore. Like standing up on your feet for eight hours a day. I'm, I'm, I'm looking for something else. <laughs> I need like a remote position or something because I can't be on my feet for eight hours throughout the day. So that's how that's going. <laughs> uh, what else new has happened? So I told you guys about the homeschooling that I'm about to start working on. I'm excited about that. I'm actually going to start doing some research now so I can start getting my curriculum together because homeschool starts, their next quarter starts at the beginning of next year. So I want to have my curriculum, my curriculum. I don't know why I just said that twice. It sounded like I said it wrong, but I'm gonna have that ready before the end of the year. So I'm excited about that. Um, I started a working on a crowdfunding page too. I'm not done with that. Right now I'm on the steps of creating the rewards for the people who donate. So I'm excited about that as well because we need to move up to the next level. We got to get some more money in here so we can get some more products. We can do some more marketing and um, I'm still pitching my store to um, business investors. Let me tell you what I'm looking for with a, with a business investor or a 
partner. I am. I'm. I'm looking for either an investor or a business partner who wants to do this with me as well versus just invest money. Um, I'm looking for, of course, another visionary, like-minded person like myself who's creative, who um, is more knowledgeable about business. That's the. That's where I lack. Um, I'm, this is all new to me and I've been learning since I started 70 Central back in 2016. Um, I've been learning along the way. It's not something that I knew beforehand. Before I started my own business, I worked in retail a lot. That's how I learned about retail business. But as far as like the real nitty gritty of business, I don't know. And I am at the point where I know I need help. Um, so with a potential business partner or investor, I'm looking for someone who's more um, knowledgeable in those areas, who has creativity, who is about community, um, building the community, building people, and um, someone who is passionate about giving back through their community or through their business, through business. So um, those are the most important things that I'm that I'm looking for with I'm sorry I'm just like I'm thinking about the whole journey of this all and it's it's a lot to deal with like it it really is it's not it's not all glitz and glamour like we see on um social media or you know TV, like you really have to be passionate and determined about what you want to provide and, and, and give and why you're doing this. Because if you're doing it for the glitz and glam, then you might as well just uh, go and get you a job, my boy. Go and get you a job because this ain't it. Because <laughs> there is no glimpse, glitz and glam without hard ass work and dedication and sacrifice. So I'm just going to leave y'all on that note. <laughs> I'm going to see y'all next time. Again, don't forget to like, subscribe. Leave your questions down in the comments and I will get back to you on the next video. Love y'all and don't forget, keep dreaming.